Welcome to today's webinar and thank you for joining us. Our session today is presented by Martha Vogel from the CDC program. Today we will cover information that will help you better understand parent eligibility requirements for child care subsidy, known in Michigan as the Child Development and Care Program. The Child Care Subsidy is an assistance program that helps parents cover some or even all of the cost of their child care expenses. The Michigan Department of Education, or MDE, is the lead agency for the program and sets the policies and requirements for the program. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, MDHHS, determines parent eligibility for the program on behalf of MDE. You may find it helpful to have a piece of paper and pen and pencil available as there will be some phone numbers and websites shared that you may want to keep for future reference. Today we will cover three topics how to qualify for CDC, how to apply, and how to find a child care provider who can participate with the CDC program. To qualify for the CDC program, two main factors are considered. The applicant, who is usually the parent, must have a valid need reason, and the family or child must meet the qualifications of an eligibility group. Let's look at the need reasons. To qualify, the parent or both parents must be unavailable to provide care because they are engaged in one of the four valid need reasons, which include the following, employment or self-employment, high school completion, which includes classes for GED, adult basic education, and English as a second language, family preservation, which means the parent requires care while receiving or taking a family member to treatment for physical, mental, or emotional condition, Approved activity, which includes activities such as job training and employment preparation program, like a cosmetology program. This need reason also includes post-secondary education, which is college coursework that is below the master's or graduate level. To qualify for CDC, a family must be included in one of the two eligibility groups. Eligibility based on factors other than income, which we will discuss in a moment, or eligibility that is based on income. In both eligibility groups, families must have assets of less than $1 million. First, we will look at eligibility when income is not considered. This eligibility group includes families and children who are eligible for CDC based on the following. The parent or child receives SSI or cash assistance. Foster children who are eligible for paid placement. Children with an active Children's Protective Services case at MDHHS. The parents are migrant farm workers or the child is homeless. If a family or child does not qualify in one of these categories, they may be eligible for CDC assistance based on income. Income eligible families are able to enter the program if their gross income is below 130% of the federal poverty guidelines. They remain income eligible as long as they continue to complete their annual redeterminations until their gross income exceeds 85% of the state median income. These amounts are set by state and federal guidelines. The income eligibility chart allows us to see the income level where a family can enter the program and where they must exit the program. The green column indicates the program entry point and is adjusted for family size. This column represents between 0 and 130% of the Federal Poverty Level, or FPL. The orange column indicates the income level for program exit, which is 85% of the state median income. Here is an example. A family size of 4 can enter the program with a monthly gross income that does not exceed $2,665 and can remain income eligible until their monthly gross income exceeds $5,601. Let's look at another example. A family size of two can enter the program with a monthly gross income of up to $1,759 and can remain income eligible until their gross monthly income exceeds $3,809. Families who are income eligible for CDC may have a co-payment amount called the family contribution. The family contribution amount is subtracted from the child care provider's payment and the parent is responsible to pay this amount to the provider. The family contribution amount is per child per two-week pay period. The amount is based on a family's income and size and some income eligible families will not have an FC. 
The family contribution amount will also be waived for a family who chooses a high quality child care provider with a three, four, or five star quality rating. We will share more details about high quality child care providers later in this webinar. Here again, we see the income eligibility chart with the family contribution amounts added to the bottom two rows. The family contribution amounts vary from zero to $90 per child per two week pay period. On this chart, the green entry limit column has been divided into two columns. The first green column represents families with a gross income below 100% of FPL and allows for them to not have a family contribution amount. For example, a family of four with a gross income below $2,050 per month will not have a family contribution. The second green entry column represents families with income between 100% and 130% of FPL. These families have income low enough to enter the CDC program, but will have an FC amount of $15 per child per two week pay period. For example, a family of four with gross income between $2,051 and $2,665 per month will have a $15 family contribution per child per two week pay period. As gross income increases, the family contribution will also increase. For example, if the family of four has an income increase up to $3,839 per month, their family contribution will be $45 per child per two week pay period. It's important to note that family contribution amounts are set for 12 months at a time and will not increase during that period of time. Also, there is a family contribution limit per family shown in the bottom row of this chart. This amount is the maximum family contribution that will be withheld from the child care provider payment in a two week period. For example, a family with four children at the $15 FC would only have $45 withheld per pay period, not $60. Now let's talk about how a family applies for the CDC program. The application steps for a parent include submitting a completed application, submitting the requested verifications, completing an interview with an MDHHS eligibility specialist, and receiving the notification of approval or denial for the program. When parents apply for the program, they have several choices. They can apply online through the MyBridges system, found at www.michigan.gov slash mybridges, or they can complete a paper application. The DHS 1171 is a paper application that allows parents to apply for multiple programs at one time, including the Child Development and Care Program, Food Assistance, and Cash Assistance. The MDE 4583 is a shorter paper application and is recommended for parents who only wish to apply for child care. Completed paper applications must be submitted to the parent's local MDHHS office. This can be done in person, by mail, or by fax. Applications and other valuable information can be found on the Child Development and Care website located at www.michigan.gov childcare. During the application process, parents must submit verifications or proof of their need for childcare. For example, if a parent is working, they could submit pay stubs. A complete list of verifications can be found at the Child Development and Care website under the Parents link. Verifications that are not submitted with the application will be requested by MDHHS. Ten calendar days is provided for the return of requested items, and if a parent is unable to meet the 10-day deadline, they can request a 10-day extension. An interview with the parent is required during the application process and is usually done by phone. The eligibility specialist will use the application, verifications, and interview information to determine if a client is eligible for the program and to determine how many hours of child care are needed. The hours will be calculated based on the time spent in the activity, meal periods during the work or school day, study time and required lab time if requested, and travel time. 10 hours per need reason per pay period. The number of hours authorized will be in increments of 20, 40, 60, 80, or 90 hours every two weeks. The eligibility decision will be made by MDHHS within 30 calendar days. 
Parents will be notified by the MDHHS office of missing or incomplete information and will have 10 days to return all requested items. The parent will receive by mail a DHS 1605 Notice of Case Action, informing them if they have been approved or denied. This notice also explains the hearing rights the parents have if they disagree with the eligibility decision. If child care has been approved, the Notice of Case Action informs the parent of the dates that are approved for child care and the number of hours approved. On this sample notice, child care has been approved for the dates of January 8, 2017 through January 6, 2018 at 90 hours every two weeks for three children. If the parent was denied, the Notice of Case Action will state denied and include the reason for the denial, such as gross income exceeds program entry limit. Once child care has been approved, it will remain open for 12 months. Eligibility will be reviewed at the end of 12 months, and child care will either continue or be closed if the family no longer needs the program or is no longer eligible. This process is called redetermination. Prior to the end of the 12-month eligibility period, the family will receive notification that it's time for their redetermination. Documentation must be submitted to their MDHHS eligibility specialist in order to continue the child care subsidy. During the 12 months of eligibility, the family has 10 days to report if any of the following occurs. A change in the household family or members, an out-of-state move, a change in child care providers, if the family assets exceed $1 million, if the family's income exceeds the upper limit for their group size in the income eligibility chart based on family size. Parents are responsible for providing accurate information to MDHHS. This includes information provided on the application and on any required forms or verifications, verifying eligibility information, reporting the required changes in circumstance within 10 days of the change, providing information to MDHHS or MDE when requested, and selecting an eligible child care provider. Now we will discuss how a family finds an eligible child care provider. An eligible provider is enrolled with the state of Michigan and able to bill and receive child care payments. There are two types of eligible providers licensed or registered child care providers who are approved through the Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, also called LARA, and unlicensed child care providers who are enrolled but not required to be licensed. Unlicensed child care providers are enrolled by the Michigan Department of Education. Parents can search online for a licensed or registered child care provider in their area by using the Great Start to Quality website at greatstarttoquality.org. Additional parent resources can also be found at this site. The Great Start to Quality database allows parents to search for child care providers that meet any specific needs they may have. For example, parents can search for child care providers who also offer preschool or Head Start programming, or child care providers with experience caring for children with attention deficit disorder or food allergies. Parents can set up and save a profile or search the website as a guest. Those who may need additional help or don't have access to the website can contact the Great Start to Quality at 877-614-7328. The Great Start to Quality website includes the quality rating of each licensed child care provider by using STARS. Participating child care providers receive between 1 and 5 STARS, with 5 STARS representing child care providers who have been determined to be at the highest level of quality. The chart shown here explains what each star rating means. The empty star indicates that the child care provider meets licensing requirements but is not participating in the Great Start to Quality rating system, which is voluntary. As mentioned earlier, a family that chooses a three, four, or five star child care provider will not have a family contribution amount deducted from the child care payment to the provider. This can add up to considerable savings and is an added incentive to seek out a high-quality child care provider. The Great Start to Quality website allows parents to view the details of the STAR rating for each child care provider. These ratings are determined using a set of standards 
Some key items the ratings show are the education level and experience of the child care provider and staff, the types of activities for children, how the program is organized to benefit the child, and how the child care provider and staff engage with the parents. Parents can find valuable information in a resource called A Parent's Guide to Early Learning and Care in Michigan. This brochure is located on the CDC website. The brochure gives guidance on topics such as selecting the right child care provider for your child, options for child care and preschool, and why high quality matters. In addition to licensed child care providers, parents can also select a friend or family member to be their child care provider. This group is sometimes referred to as family friend and neighbor care or unlicensed care. This individual must be enrolled by the Michigan Department of Education as an unlicensed child care provider in order to be eligible to bill and receive payment through the child care program. Unlicensed child care providers are approved by the Michigan Department of Education and can provide care in the child's home or in their own home if they are related to the child as a grandparent, great-grandparent, aunt, great-aunt, uncle, great-uncle, or sibling. An application to become enrolled as an unlicensed child care provider can be found at www.michigan.gov slash child care. In addition to submitting the application, an unlicensed child care provider must complete a one-time basic training requirement before they can be authorized to bill. Child care providers and adult household members must also pass a criminal background check. Questions about unlicensed child care providers can be directed to the Child Care Program Office by calling 1-866-990-3227. Once a parent has selected a child care provider, either licensed or unlicensed, the DHS 4025 must be completed and submitted to the MDHHS office. This form collects information about the child care provider, such as the name and location in which care is provided. It also indicates the date that care will begin. Child care payments cannot be issued for care until the completed form is submitted to a parent's eligibility specialist, allowing the child to be assigned to the child care provider. Once the child care provider assignment has been made, both the parent and the child care provider will receive notification that the child care provider is authorized to bill for payment. This notification is called the Authorization Notice and is also called the DHS 198C for clients and the 198 for child care providers. The child care program cannot guarantee payment until the parent's eligibility is fully determined and the parent and child care provider have received the notice of authorization. Here is a sample DHS 198C. The important information this notice provides is highlighted and includes the provider ID, the child's name, the begin and end dates of the authorization, the authorized hours, which is the maximum number of hours the child care provider can be reimbursed for, and the family contribution, which we covered earlier in this webinar. Parents are responsible for all charges not covered by the child care program. This includes charges for child care provided during the period when eligibility is being determined and paying the child care provider any amounts not covered by the child care subsidy, including the family contribution and the difference between the child care subsidy reimbursement rate and what the child care provider charges. The Child Development and Care Handbook provides complete information about the child care program and is available at www.michigan.gov slash child care. Questions about child care provider enrollment or about CDC billing and payments can be directed to 1-866-990-3227. Parents who have questions about eligibility for the child care program should contact their local MDHHS office. And finally, parents who would like assistance finding a high-quality child care provider should contact the Great Start to Quality at 1-877-614-7328 or visit their website www.greatstarttoquality.org. Thank you for joining us today.